What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 30 of my Ocean Block Let's Play. Oh, it is nighttime. Let's go to sleep. Um, and this is the the last of the Ocean Block series. Done 30 days straight of daily episodes with the minor inconvenience of uh, yesterday's episode. But really, in the grand scheme of things, does that really matter? It still came out daily. Uh, no, I don't think so. So we're uh, we're in the middle of checking out Batania. And uh, I need to make more of these like little uh, white flowers. So we're going to do a little hack here. I'm going to just keep this on me. And do I have any shears? It also always helps to spell things correctly. And then bone meal. And hopefully this still works so the same way. So you can see that we got four. We had uh, we get two per plant. Right, so you plant them by just right clicking, you can see the little sparkles in the outline, right? Okay, put those in. Right click, they become the double flowers. And if you just break these normally, um, they'll become a single flower. But if you hit it with shears, you get the tall one, which turns into four. So theoretically, you're doubling these every single time. Um, so now we have 16 white petals. See how that works. And then a single bone meal will bring them up. And then you just tear them all back down. And what I like to do is I keep one of them, just the plant still. And then you have um, the ability to make more of those if you need it. So uh, I think, yeah, we need to, oh, no. How do I do this? Yeah, here, I'll show you what it looks like when you when you break it. Oh, we got nothing. Yeah, we didn't even get a we didn't even get a flower. I don't know what that's all about. Okay, let's read our book. How do we do this? Uh Last, uh, pure daisy petal of health. Okay. Okay, so maybe we do need water. Oh, we do need water because we toss it in there. Oh, man. Um, petal of health. Okay. So this block, when placed in the world and given some water by right-clicking or throwing in a water bucket, it'll accept mystical um, petals, which you can actually pump water into this in, into these as well. Um, once uh, correct petals have been provided, throwing any seeds in there will finalize the crafting process. All functional and generating floor are made here. For more information, read through the respective sections in the lexicon. Uh, sneak right clicking the petal on the apothecary with an empty hand will remove the last item that you threw in. Good to know. Right? Sneak right clicking with. Okay. Uh, if it's filled with lava instead of water, it'll serve as a brazier and incinerator, destroying any items that come in contact. I accidentally clicked off of it. Um, tossing vines into a cobblestone apothecary will give it an overgrown appearance. Okay. Uh, comparators can detect an apothecary's fullness. Uh, that's good for automation. Uh, since it could be filled with dropped water buckets and dispensers can fill water buckets, creating a system that will automatically refill the water. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult. It's true. I usually just pump water into the bottom of it. I, I if it, I'm hoping that that still works. It should. I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, we need a bucket. Bucket, please. We're just gonna grab water from over here because we're we're not gonna be doing a ton of uh, pedal work, you know. So, I think we no. We don't do that. Stop right-clicking, Dwight. That's not what, how we do this. Yeah, interesting. We don't we don't get those back at all. Two, three, four. Okay, and you can see there that we have a valid recipe. All we need is seeds to get our flower. So there we go. Some wheat seeds. Oof! That scared me. That was really loud. Um, better yet, 
craft Catania. Why why are you so loud, Batania? There we go. Okay. Uh alright, so we have our pure daisy. Which is great. And now we could place our pure daisy down in the world, right? And if we grab logs, this works for stone as well. This is how you make uh stone this way. I think all we gotta do is just place it all the way around it. And you can see all the little sparkles on it. And eventually, this will turn it into living wood. And I don't think that it works one step up. I think you need to put another daisy, which you can do with the um, floating flowers. So you can make a floating flower. And it doesn't, so those ones don't need to be placed on the ground. They could just be placed uh, like anywhere you can put, put a block, which is great. Um, and it'll go in the order that you place the block. So I think I placed that one first. So that one should go first while we wait wanting to get some smooth stone as well because we're going to need this it does take some time which you know in the meantime we could just make another another daisy there it is perfect and then we could place that like here. And then we could do two sets at a time. Wonderful. There it is. We could just leave, the, leave those alone and let them go. Uh, and then we're going to create our wand. That's why we did this. Oh, whoa. Getting ahead of myself here. We need to make sticks. So we need two, three of these. I'll just put that in our system and then we can create our wand. And depending on what petals you put on here will depend on what your wand looks like. So you can change it up if you want to. Different colors and all that. But, uh, it, you know, it doesn't matter. And you're going to use this, I think, to... Yeah, we're going to use this to bind the different blocks in, in Batania. And I think we use this to activate things as well. There we go. Got some living rock. We're going to be using that living rock too. So this is a very easy to automate system too. Basically, you just tell it to like look for blocks that are different and break them and then replace them with other things. It's very easy to do. Um, especially with refined storages, um, construction and destruction stuff, constructor and destructor, very easy to do. Um, all right. I don't know how much living rock we're going to need or wood, so I'm just going to keep it rolling. You know, why not? I know we're going to use living rock for our, um, let me actually open it up this way. Uh, for our little mana pool, wherever that is. There's so many things in this mod. Ooh, Gaia's guardian head. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's my head. That's right. I am Gaia. There we go. Our first little mana pool, which um, this is going to collect our, our mana once we start um, uh, creating it sending it out into the world first off though let's go in here weed seeds redstone cluster great let's pick this guy up oh that was a lot of redstone okay bone meal in fact we could just put these flowers into the system because we can find them Pure Daisy. Let's go pick ours up. There it is. Uh, mana pool. We got ahead of ourselves here. That's okay, though. Reward collected. Wonderful. Ender pouch. Always good. More stone and wood. What was that? 
Singularity tank. Mana Seal Helmet. Catalyst. Catalysts are placed under a mana pool to change the recipe of the pool. True. Runic Altar. Yes, this is uh, what we'll be doing first. So to get a mana diamond, we throw a diamond into the pool that has mana in it, and it turns it into one. We already have mana diamonds, so uh, we don't necessarily need to do that, but we need to create mana anyway, so we might as well try that. Just get rid of that shader like the last one. Um, oh, cool. There's mana affinity. 10% less mana cost on mana tools and rods. Interesting. Always cool to see uh, set bonuses, you know? All right. Uh, shears, move that away. All right. Throw our ender pouch. And let's look at the lexicon. So go back. We done our pure daisy, you can see. Uh, that makes our sticks, and that's how you do that. Runic altar. Uh, mana manipulation. To use it, start by placing either right click or simple toss. The components of uh, the rune you want to create upon the altar. Point a mana spreader. So we got to make a mana spreader as well. Uh, which I can't seem to bookmark this way. That's fine. Um, and the mana spreader basically will shoot mana in whatever direction that you need it to go. Um, I think we just got to place it next to a mana pool. Um, faces cardinal direction in place. Uh, sneak right clicking with a wand. We'll face it somewhere else. It can be aimed at other blocks in bind mode. Ba, ba, ba. Generating floor. That's the thing that we gotta make next. Flowers when placed auto bind to the nearest spreader. Um, hovering over a spreader highlights its target. Sparkles show where mana loss begins to occur. I think that's right. If it's too far away, I think we get less mana. Kind of like how electricity works. Uh, actually, go back. As long as the target of spreader can accept mana. Okay. I think, I'm pretty sure we can throw one right next to, yeah, um, a mana pool. And it'd be fine. Okay, let's uh, let's go to generating flora, right? Endo flame is probably our first one because that one's not bad. Hydrangeas, I think this one just needs water near it. Um, they suck up any still water in a three by three area, at the same altitude around them, converting the water into mana. Mana. Even though they seem to function faster during the rain, their base mana throughout. Throughput is still rather slow, and in, in addition, they decay after around three days. Not great. Okay. Endoflame. Uh, it'll absorb any combustible items. So if we throw, like, coal or coal blocks, charcoal, wood, anything that can be set on fire, basically anything that can be used as fuel, I think, in a furnace, it'll use. Um... The amount of time it takes to burn through an item is roughly half of the time a furnace would. Um, and a flame will not burn anything that leaves byproducts in furnaces, such as lava buckets. Okay, great. Um, can only burn around four block of coals worth of fuel at once. If any single item with a longer burn time is used, it is its full efficiency will be lost. Uh... It shouldn't be run manually forever as the flower requires dropped items and open crate. Um, some sort of output limiter, a timer or ideal a pressure plate would be ideal for it. Okay. Pressure plate wouldn't actually be so bad when arson becomes useful. Okay. So endo flame is two brown, a red and a light gray. 
So if we look at Batania, um, it does not look like we have uh, brown. Do we not have brown or red? Which uh, that's kind of stinky. Orange, gray, green, lime, white. So mystical red that comes from this guy and there is no oh mystical flower essence that's interesting okay okay that would have been that this is a good one to 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 make into seeds okay cool uh but we do need to make more of the fertilizer i think because we need those flowers Okay, so we need dyes. That's what it is. So if we look up dye, let's just tell it to create a bunch of black dye. That way we use that instead. Tanya fertilizer. There it is. There we go. 33 of it. And okay, there's our red. Awesome. Now we just need brown. This is also another thing that's pretty easy to automate too. Um, you just have it right click the bottom of a bunch of grass. There's our brown, great, okay. So brown and red. So we're gonna duplicate that a little bit threw our wand away. That's okay. Okay. We do this. That is, that's a, another really loud thing. It's not so much that sound. It's definitely a plant thing though. No. Flout. Ooh, what am I looking for? Block. Grass. No. Plant. Hmm. Wood, 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 wool, fish. Player burp. <coughs> Eh, whatever. Okay, and then we use our shears, cut them all down. It's very easy to set up a, a thing that duplicates these as well. Uh, that's how I got things like way back in the day. I would just like put these in machines and duplicate them. So we're just going to take half of them, create 16 petals, throw the plants back in there. And then we're going to create our... New seed. So what was it? It was two brown. That's what it was. Okay. And then we need to put water back in here. So two brown, that, this, and some seeds. Easy. We're going to create two of these guys. Nice. All right, and uh, before we get too far, I want to make a mana spreader. Gotta do it in this menu where I actually have my items. Uh, 
mana spreader. Easy enough. And we're just going to throw this guy down, let's just say here, right? And then if we hold our wand, we could see which way he's pointing. Right there. So now we're going to, we, we shift right clicked him. So he's pointed at our mana pool, right? You can see that he has mana pool in his sights. So when we place down our flowers, they're going to automatically get selected on the mana spreader. So um, I think if we place these too close to each other, they fight over the same material. So I'm going to avoid that by putting them here. And so you can see that they're connected to the mana spreader, which is going to send mana into our pool. Pretty sure that's what that said. We're going to find out. So I'll take six of these guys. So I can throw down coal right next to them. And you'll see they'll eat them up. And it's turning them into mana, which is being sent. And you can see there, even without holding the wand, you can see our mana being sent into our pool. And that little tiny little blue line there on the bottom or on the left side, that's how much mana we have. And you can see that he, uh, when he fills up to a certain amount, he sends it out. And these guys are doing great. And I, yeah, it doesn't look like they, yeah, they accept new items until after they're done. So there it is. That's how we create our mana for the first, uh, first little bit. And you can create more of those guys too. I mean, there's, there's nothing stopping you. You can, you can make as many of these as you want. Oh, you know provided that you actually uh, do it correctly. There we go. We'll put this guy like right here and give him a piece of coal block. He'll suck it up and he'll help add to this. And now we're getting mana a little bit faster. There we go. This is also like the slowest way to make mana, really. I mean, I guess outside of doing the water one. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's beginner beginner mana right there. And so they want us to make the altar, right? That's the next step. And the altar uses a mana diamond or a pearl which I think both of these use the same amount of mana. Yeah, it looks like it. And a uh, pearl is going to be much cheaper for us than throwing in a diamond. Even though we have mana diamonds, I, I just want to show you guys. We got a little green check mark, so all we got to do is just toss it in there. And then we get a mana pearl back, and it used some of our mana for that. And now we can create our altar. You can see I put a I put a mana diamond in there anyways. We didn't even use the pearl that we made. Um, and it uh, looks like we unlocked new chapters. Nice. So we're going to put this guy somewhat close to our mana thing here. Because we're going to need to send mana to it. And see it's all swirly. And it works the same way where you put something in there and it'll spin around. We'll just take that back out. And look at our trusty book here yeah we have unlocked a lot more stuff here because now that we have the altar that's kind of like the meat and bones of crafting um let's see natural apparatus i want to know what the hovering hourglass does the ability to keep time is essential for anybody who wishes to build any redstoning contraptions a classical timer however can take up frankly unfortunate amounts of space to say nothing about efficiency um Okay, so it's a very fancy redstone timer. The hourglass can hold up to one stack of either sand, red sand, or soul sand. Um, removes the sand. Once sand is added, it'll start draining. Once the sand finishes draining, the hourglass emits one redstone pulse and flips, restarting the process. The amount of time between pulses is dependent on the type of... The type and quantity of sand. Interesting. So sand falls at a rate of one 
a rate of for one second per block. Okay, so every block is one second. Red sand is 10 seconds per. Soul sand is one minute. Okay. Sand types can't be mixed, though. Darn it. Okay. Sand can't be added incrementally by hand, so the size of the stack would be adjusted in inventory. Okay, so you add it all at once. Sand in the hourglass can, however, be adjusted by hoppers or similar means. If a mana burst collides with an hourglass, it'll stem the flow of sand and pause the timer. Another burst will continue it. Mana powder can be used in lieu of sand. Doing this turns the hourglass from a timer into a counter. Pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, animated torch. Fancy. Ooh, I, I think I vaguely remember drums. I think they... So this is the exact same purpose, but I can... A drum beat that destroys nearby vegetation. Cool. Mana pylons pull natural energies from the earth and uses them to power enchanting processes. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of extra stuff with Batania here. Generating flora. Let's see. Can we make anything better? The thermal lily. Lava. Okay. Produce mana continually for around 45 seconds, but afterwards it will need a bit of time. About five minutes to cool down. Oof. Rosa Arcana. Experience, po experience points contains magic of their own. Absorbing the experience of nearby players and turning it into mana. Okay. Narslimus. Uh, creates slimes at certain points. Seemingly at random, slime chunks, they call these points. The Narslimus is a flower, that ability to tap into that energy. It'll absorb slimes created by that power and collect all the mana generated by the destruction. The larger the slime, the more mana. It also makes a bit of a sticky mess. Interesting. That's cool. So if we have the ability to summon slimes or if we find a slime chunk or something, we can use that. Uh, Munch Dew. Uh, Munch Dew will eat up any nearby leaves and convert them into mana. Okay. After it eats all the ones in range, it'll take a digestive break. Gormorillus. I assume this one's probably just food. It can only digest a single food item at a given time, outputting mana once it's done. It will devour any other foods while it's digesting but yield no return the amount of time that it takes to digest depends on the food's nutritional value i think our meat mountains would destroy it then uh the rate of mana production or production will also depend on nutrition hot pot for our new residents it loves variety in its diet. Feeding it different foods can be very rewarding. Giving it the same food repeatedly might not go over so well, though. Interesting. Okay. Uh, intro pinium. You can see our, our mana stopped production just now. Uh, to generate a blast of mana, in fact, a blast might be required. Igniting a block of TNT on dry land near... It will have, uh, it'll absorb all of it and turn it into, uh, mana. Oof. That could be kind of fun to create, like, an infinite TNT dropping mechanism on top of all these flowers to generate mana. Okay, so, uh, I don't really like any of those flowers. Um... Not to say that, you know, they're not good ways of generating mana. Just as of right now, you know, I think um, 
I think what we have here is is just fine. Okay, we got a little bit more mana now. So, uh, guys, that's gonna be it. That's gonna do it for this uh, for Ocean Block. You know, we we dived a little bit into Batania. This is basically really just to get our feet wet. Um, let's just accept our last reward here. Iron seeds. Never mind. Now our last reward. Ring of the Mantle. Fantastic. I think that probably lets us like walk up one step stuff. But um, yeah, uh, that that's gonna be it. Uh, I'm I'm super excited to move on to the other pack because we're really going to be able to dive a lot deeper with these mods. Um, we're going to be able to make bigger stuff. We're, we're not going to be restricted by having no ores around. We're going to have other dimensions to explore um, that aren't just like lava lakes and uh, the end sea or whatever was going on in the end. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I think the pack that we're going to end up playing is, let me just double check. I think it's called Endeavor. Yeah. FTB Endeavor, which is um, a 116 mod pack. Uh, so just like this one, it's 116.5. Even though a lot of mods are actually coming out for 118 right now, it seems like a lot of the mod developers are figuring out ways to, to do that pretty successfully. So who knows? We might move to a, a 118 pack and then we have caves and cliffs to, to play with too which would be incredible um but uh yeah that's that's it that's this is this is my ocean block list but if you guys are still interested honestly in seeing like how far you can really go with ocean block highly suggest you just go watch dire you you don't even need to watch any of his previous episodes i think he's on like episode like 35 as as of recording right now um it um he is basically like outside of the fact that he dabbled into blood magic, which I didn't, you're not going to be too confused on where he's at right now. Uh, he's, he's diving into mechanisms, uh, reactors right now, which it already kind of failed on him. I think that was episode 34, which was pretty funny. Um, so maybe watch that if you would like to see a reactor explode and cause a bunch of radiation damage. Um, but he is going to be taking things way more uh, advanced than I would have with this pack. And uh, just because that's who he is. That's what he does. And he's already kind of ramping up for a lot of that stuff right now. He has like 1 billion RF right now stored in his system. You know, we have 11 million really. Plus, I guess, the 30 mil that's in here every now and then. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to watch more of the Ocean Block stuff. Go check out his series. If not, we're going to be here starting a new pack uh, very soon. Just give me a couple of days to kind of relax and kind of refresh myself. And uh, I will be back before you know it. And this concludes our 30 days of daily content, which I have not done in like six years. I've not done this in a very long time. And the support was fucking awesome. Uh, so I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep on going. Uh so I appreciate everybody watching. If you guys like this, you know you know what to do. I have asked you guys 30 times now. I don't feel like I got to do it again. I guess I've asked you 29 times because I haven't asked you yet for this one. But you know. It's YouTube. There's, there's only so many things that people ask you. They ask you to subscribe, turn on notifications, which you don't have to do on my shit, um, and, uh, and like videos. I guess I just asked. So 30, 30 times. Anyways, goodbye, everybody.